get that going. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Erin Maney, and I'm the manager of Open SUNY Communities of Engagement. On behalf of the Open SUNY team, I wanna welcome you to today's fellow chat. Our fellow chat series is a program that we offer monthly with the aim of featuring Open SUNY fellows and their work that supports networking and excellence in online teaching and learning. So we're thrilled that you could be with us today. Teresa, I'll have you advance the slide for me. I've given Teresa control today. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Yeah, that could be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so today we're pleased to welcome Teresa Gilliard Cook from SUNY Oswego, who will share some best practices, strategies, and research and in, around incorporating group work in your courses. Teresa is the senior instructional designer at SUNY Oswego. And in this role, she leads the team of instructional designers to support faculty in online and hybrid course development, as well as provide some consultation and assistance to, um, to any teaching faculty, regardless of what modality they're using. Teresa holds a BS in Information Technology and Management and an MS in Telecommunications and Network Management from Syracuse University. She's also completed an additional 45 graduate credits in Instructional Design from SU. So on behalf of the Open SUNY community, Teresa, thanks for joining us and sharing your experience with us. You're welcome, Erin, and thank you all for asking and thank everybody for coming. <laughs> so what I've been doing is doing some work on group work in online courses um, because even in a face-to-face -face course it's challenging to create groups. Um, in the past I've taken a course um, on project management online and some of those practices can be really helpful and so some of the things that the research shows us is that that can be helpful as well. So um, the other thing too on this title screen is I do have a bit.ly link. Um, I have a few items that you are more than welcome to go look at, to read, to use. Um, they're just some things I found, some things I put together really quickly. So, you know, feel free to go there as well. So when I usually do this presentation, I'm usually, um, usually as faculty. And so I'll ask these kinds of questions as far as if, they have you know used groups in their face-to-face -face courses what about their hybrid blend courses what about their online courses and i'll encourage them to tell me about their experiences um, because again sometimes that can help frame some of the things that we focus on in the sessions that i'll do say with our faculty here at oswego um, and then i'll ask though as you can see too for those that have not used groups particularly in an online i'll ask them why because it's usually a s several answers common. One most common is it's a lot of work, students complain, um, and that sometimes faculty and students just dis dislike group work, and that's what the research suggests. And the common complaints, as you can see, you know, it's a scheduling difficulty. So think about if you've worked in groups in any coursework you've taken, whether it's been face-to-face, -face, online, how difficult is it to get everybody together? Um, different people will participate at different levels. So yeah, you have the slackers and that gets really frustrating. And then of course there's conflicts within the groups as well. So the research also suggests that there is value as we know in group or project work in online courses. Um, and the problems that all of the students have in those kinds of modalities are similar to face-to-face. -face. Um, but one of the other things that the, um, the research shows is that it's really important in how much the in instructor participates in those discussions and those conflicts with their students because that helps drive how students eventually do perceive group work. Um, and then the last thing is is that because Students' experience in online groups or groups of any type is valued by, by potential employers. And um, I'll show you a list from NACE in a moment. Oh, there it is. Um, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, this is their top 10. Now, this is based on 2017. I haven't pulled the 2018 yet. Um, 
but you can see the top ones are the ability to work in a team, problem solving, communication, and all of those things are really important within a team. So, um, and I'm still seeing that too. And for those of you that were at CIT last May, June, um, our keynote speaker also addressed some of this in his, um, in his talk. So I thought that was kind of timely because I had started to look at that, look at group work back then. So the other thing the research is suggesting is that you, using project management principles in um, group work, regardless of modality, um, and that, because that can really help guide the students through the process. So we'll talk more about that. And if anybody has questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and Erin will certainly field them for me. Um, but I'm, I don't have an issue being interrupted. <laughs> so the research does say, and again, good instructional principles say, make sure the assignment, the purpose aligns with your learning objectives and your overarching course outcomes. Because again, if, if you're just putting the group together for just because it's something to do, it's not necessarily going to work well. Um, and then of course, making sure your students know exactly what's expected of them. So using obviously rubrics or templates, um, bulleted lists, checklists, whatever you think will work with your students to make sure that they know exactly what's expected at each stage. Oops. Hold on. Technical. Oh, I did that one. Okay. Um, so some of the strategies and tips that were in the in the literature talk about um, instructors setting up the groups instead of having students create their own groups. Now the reason, one of the reasons you may want to do this is because you would have your students do a skills inventory and a skills inventory would then let you balance out the different skills that students have because maybe you have several students who have strong um, organizational management type skills and so those could be your group leaders or project managers. Maybe some have some, are, are very good writers. Um, so you, those could be the ones that could help write the paper or write the scripts, depending on the type of project it is. Um, and so what's really, the other thing the research says too, is student, students who have those essential skills can model them for the other students. So it provides, you know, peer-to-peer -peer learning as well. The other thing that the research suggests is that there isn't, students aren't explaining, Students aren't told why this is important. So we as instructors, instructional designers, need to help find, help the students see the relevance of why they're doing group work. So going back to what NACE has as their top skill they would like to see is that the employers value the experience. Um, it's, it can help them in so many ways and with the way, um, our work world is going, virtual teams um, are becoming much, much more common than they've ever been. So having, for students to have those skill sets to be able to work in teams, whether they're face-to-face -face or online, again, can help them in their job search. Um, other, um, another way you can provide relevance is providing articles on um, why teamwork and virtual teamwork is important. Coping with hitchhikers and couch potatoes on teams is a student facing article. And um, in, um, I do have a link to that in my, um, on my resources page in um, the folder that, in the folder that is provided. Um, the other thing they found too is that students don't understand the group formation process. Um, you know, forming, norming, storming, performing. And so when they run into conflicts, they're like, oh my God, something's wrong. It's not working. Um, and students need to understand that all of that is normal in, in group work um, because you have a group of people who have different ideas, different ways of doing things who need to come together and, and perform 
but they need to work through all of those other pieces before they get to that point. And, that, and that's one of the things I do remember seeing with students um, when I was teaching in the classroom was that the thing that really made them the most upset or, or anxious was the fact that they were, there was conflict within the team and it's just telling them, you know, it's normal. So if there are some articles out there, some websites out there that can at least outline that process so students know, okay, this is, this is normal. Um, again, because the research is suggesting that we do group work in a way that uses um, a lot of project management principles. In project management, you would create a group charter or a formation document. And you could do something very simple just so that all, all of your students in each group all understand what's going on and why, um, what's the purpose of the group. So you can, you know, have like your team leader, your manager, your members, your, I'm sorry, your members, um, you know, in there, the students can determine what their principles are, you know, how they'll make decisions, how they'll deal with issues, um, how the team will communicate. You know, it's just building all those team expectations because, again, that doesn't happen normally because um, students aren't necessarily given the guidance they need. Um, to work through that. Now, yes, everything I'm explaining, everything I'm suggesting is absolutely more work for the instructor. However, it can be so beneficial because then the groups potentially could run a bit smoother and there may be less, mm, less conflict within the groups when you set certain things in place. Um, so again, you know, with them doing a skills inventory, it can help, it helps the students also see who has what strengths and who can do the different pieces and or who should lead the different pieces. Um, and it also allows students the opportunities then to practice skills. So maybe, maybe one of the students in the group um, would really like to be the team lead or the project manager, well, this is a, a way for them to learn that, um, how to be that, and also have some supports in place. Um, the research suggests that the teams should choose their lead and who should fill the other roles. However, an instructor can certainly provide input into that um, because they could help guide the students on who should be doing what, depending on the type of project. Um, providing an explanation of the roles um, really helps too, because if, you, if it's a paper versus, say, creating some kind of a video, the different skill sets are needed. So like for a video, for example, you, you know, you're thinking of concept, and then you need to think about, well, who might do storyboarding, and who might write script who might write the script and then who knows how to use the different types of equipment and 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 those kinds of things so depending on what the um the project is again it helps for students to see what the different responsibilities are because then again it's a another way for them maybe to learn some new skills so this piece where you're creating a list of teamwork problems and part possible solutions can be very beneficial to students because, again, it's another way for them to see that um, these are common things and here are some ways to resolve them. Um, and there's a lot of material online um, that could help students in how to work through these problems themselves instead of necessarily having the instructor um, deal with all of that. Um, again, those are skills that are valuable to the students because they can take those forward with them and dealing with different types of conflicts that they will come in. Um, again, yes, this is um, a bit more work for the instructor, but again, it's a way for students to see, okay, these are normal, here's how I can do this, and maybe then again, there may be minimal need at least at a certain point for instructor intervention. Um, 
and the other thing too is students can have aren't sure when to ask their instructor for assistance in, in, in resolving conflicts or problems. So it's really important too for the instructor to provide, you know, here's the steps you need to go through before you come contact me to mediate for you. And I think that's really helpful for students to understand how the process works and that these skills, again, are so valuable for them to learn. Teresa, I have a question while yes. you're still on sort of this topic. Um, yes. Maureen is asking if, if there's a benefit to switching roles throughout the project. So it's, for an example, each week there may be a new project lead and team members take on different roles. What's your experience with that? I haven't seen that and I haven't seen anything in the literature that suggests, suggests that that could be an option. But I, I think it depends on the project. Um, because if you do, maybe it's a, you could maybe do it in a way where, for example, and I'm going to go to the next slide because it might help answer some of that. If you're creating checkpoints throughout the semester, maybe that's a place where you could consider changing roles for your students. It's just, it could cause issues but then again it depends on the type of project and if it's a series of mini projects maybe that would work but there really hasn't I have not seen anything specifically in the research that talks about that but then again I haven't looked for that either so I, I'm sorry Maureen I don't know if that answers your question but um, it's certainly something to think about and it might work in certain circumstances and then there's a, another question related to the previous slide um, asking if you have a sample or an example of a group assignment where um, all of this setup is outlined really well for students. So like what's important to make sure that that's included in that? Not at this point. It's not something I've built yet. Um, I have ideas on how to put it together. I just haven't had the chance or the time. But I would, if there are others who would be, who would, love to work on doing something like that again to flesh out what we can provide our faculty i would love to do that because um, there's a lot of pieces to this i mean there's pieces online that we can grab there's videos online that we could point to um, there's some resources that suny has already created on the concept of teamwork and group work um, so we could certainly pull a lot of that together and create a resource that could really benefit all of our faculty. And then, of course, our fac faculty outside of SUNY as well. So if there's others who would be interested in working on that with me, I would love to do that. And that there is some interest expressed in the chat, so we'll be sure to share that with you. Um, awesome. Since there is that shared folder, maybe a collaborative doc could even just get started. Absolutely, absolutely. That was why I, I had created the Bitly link because those resources are there. But you know, it, I've just really scratched the surface of what I was finding with the research. Um, there's more I would love to delve into, particularly one article that I had found, um, and if I could remember the name of it, I would say it. But it's in my re it's in my references at the end of the slides, so I'll point it out when we get there. But I thought that one was probably one of the best ones I found, particularly in the concept of instructional design and building projects in courses using ID concepts and stuff, which we do anyway, but it's some, it was a framework that was put together that I thought was really helpful. All right, let me go. All right, so I, I have already mentioned the fact that there should be check-in points throughout the semester, especially if this is a, obviously, if this is a, a semester-long project or, you know, a big project that um, the students will be working on through a good chunk of the semester. So creating short assignments that will allow you how allow you to know how the project is progressing. So this assignment could just be, well, here's where we're, you know, here's what we're doing. Here's some of the problems we've run into. Here's what we've been able to resolve. Um, here's some new things we've found that we're not sure what how to do with. Can we schedule time to talk with you, instructor? Um, so these are some different things that. Um, can help students so they feel like they're being supported through the process of doing um, this group work, which, 
you know, they, they do need some guidance to work through. Um, what's nice for an instructor is that based on some of this, these are types of things you can add to your document on how to solve problems, you know, for students to solve their own problems within their groups. So you can certainly create that living document so students have something to go to and at least can try certain things before, again, they ask for you to intervene. And, and these check-in points also can provide those opportunities for students to ask questions because sometimes they don't think to ask them and, and this, you know, having these check-in points can allow, allows them to say, oh, well, we realize we don't get this, so can we get some more explanation on that? Um, the use of technology and tools, obviously in an online course, um, you know, they're going to have to use technology. But one of the things that is really helpful is that it's tools either they, they are well versed in or that your institution supports. So for example, um, so yes, we go to Google campus. We, um, our help desk will support um, the Google suite, which includes Hangouts, presentations, and some of those different things. And so if a student runs into problems, they can call our help desk and and have some assistance in trying to figure out why certain things won't work in Google Doc or what kind of problems they're having with Hangout. Hangouts. Also, we're, we're a Blackboard campus, so another way we could do it is have students using various pieces and collaborate. And this just helps communication. As long as the students in their formation document or their formation time determine how the group is going to communicate and what tools they're going to use, that really helps students work through these different pieces. Um, and you as the instructor to, can provide ideas and suggestions with tools that you're familiar with that might have supports um, such as well-written, well-written um, FAQs, YouTube videos, etc. And when I what I mean on here, what we do, and I was explaining that we're a Google campus, so we've made a conscious choice to help our faculty encourage students to use um, the Google Suite so that they can get the help they need. And again, you know, some students know other um, other technologies well, um, and as long as the group as a whole agrees to use those tools, um, then they can figure out how they're going to help each other should they be unfamiliar with those particular tools. So that was really what I took away from the research. Um, but um, these, these are the different articles I found that were really helpful in helping me pull this together. Um, but the one article I found the most helpful was the Posey and Lyons article, The Instructional Design of Online Collaborative Learning. Um, that was really, from my perspective as an ID, I, that was probably one of the best pieces I saw. And the other article I really liked was The Seven Problems of Online Group Learning and Their Solutions because, again, that was another place I was able to extrapolate some really good ideas and suggestions to be able to um, pull this together. Hang on. In, um, in the bit.ly folder, I also um, added a couple links to a couple other articles by um, Barbara Oakley. She's the one who wrote the one about the couch potatoes and hip hitchhikers. Um, but there's, it's also part of a larger article called it, it Takes Two to Tango, um, how good students are enabling some bad behavior or something like that. But I have that, I have links to those in the references um, page in the, the folder I've created. So um, at this point, that's really all I have, but I'm happy to have discussion with you all as well as um, uh, other comments, suggestions, and um, we can go from there.
Sure. So, Teresa, in the Bitly folder, I'm not sure if there is an example, but um, if not, maybe you've come across something. But someone was asking about examples of a good skills inventory. I actually have one in there. It's not the best, um, but it's an idea. Um, I ha again, that's something I have in my head that I just need to develop real quick. And it shouldn't take long because you can just use an Excel folder, but a lot of it has to do with the type of project it is. So keep that in mind too. If it's a, um, if it, if it's something where somebody needs, you know, good time management skills or has had experience as a team lead, um, you know, those are kinds of things you're going to be looking for. Maybe who's got you know, who, who likes to write or who has good writing skills. And, um, but again, a lot of it is dependent on the type of project that you're having students do in a class. Let me see, sure. Let me see if um, I can go out there. Yep. You may have to stop screen sharing and then just yes. go to the tab. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I, is that my drive? Hang on. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a, this isn't a pretty one, but I have something like that. This was something I found that I just pulled, but it's, it's an Excel spreadsheet, so it's quite editable, um, and it can be opened up in, in, in sheets if that's what people prefer. Um, the presentation's in there. The other resources is just a list of some other things I have found, and then the two Oakley um, articles are in here as well. What else did I put in there? This team contract guide. This is actually something that was created um, through an IITG grant that was, um, who was on that team? SUNY Oswego, Binghamton, Cornell, and Buffalo. And this I thought was well done and we t it's really a great guide for students and for faculty to use to help their students um, but it's 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 pretty simple but yet yeah, it's it's a tool we can use um, it's written it's actually from the um, it's, it's a professional skills course that was developed as part of an IITG grant and um, they have teamwork in there too, so this was created as part of that. So it's freely available. So I have a couple other questions. Sure. For you. Um, so John was asking, how do you overcome the limitations of using synchronous meetings in, you know, Collaborate or Zoom or whatever for students to meet to collaborate when otherwise the course is like a 24 seven asynchronous course? Well, and I think, yeah, that's always a challenge. I think that's a challenge regardless of of what it is you're doing. But I think y you can encourage your students to f figure out a way to do it. Again, I, you know, having taken online courses um, and having to do a group project, we went, how did we do? Oh, we found a free, free phone bridge because we chose to do it all by phone. Now this is several years ago, um, but you know, if students can find a way it, or they have to make other arrangements figuring out how they how they're going to manage this project and again if you think about it it's real life it's real life experience they the students could very well experience virtual teams and so they're going to be you know on all different time zones so um they just need to figure out what works best for them. Um, and that's why the, the, um, the team charter is so critical because it's there where they hash out how they're going to make this work. And, and they all need to agree to it. So that's really one of the key pieces is this team charter, or you can call it whatever you want, but that's what is called in project management is a team charter. And so with that, that really outlines how the team is going to manage itself and how it's going to complete the project and meet its milestones and deadlines to completion. 
And so there's a follow-up question um, sure. to that, but um, there was uh, another suggestion that someone had used doodle polls to try to get students to agree on times. Um, yep. And then also, you know, just using Zoom or using your platform, you can record it. So if a student had to miss it, they, it's available after Absolutely. the Absolutely. Other strategies were shared. Absolutely. And those are things too, like what I pulled together to create this presentation is definitely not all inclusive. Um, and that's why I would love to work with people to really come up with some other ideas because yeah, doodle polls is great because it's a free tool and it's easy to use. Um, recording, you know, we, I know Hangouts records, we know Collaborate records. So those are some different tools that they can certainly use. And then there's other tools that maybe they're more familiar with or prefer to use that could actually be beneficial to whatever it is they're doing. So there's no right or wrong. It's just what makes sense. And just, uh, uh, just us as instructional designers or instructors to help support our students through that process. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's, uh, there's always negativity surrounding group work, but particularly from the, the student perspective, if yes. they've had bad experiences, how, how might you help overcome their negative feelings about that? Well, and I think that's where helping provide relevance can be helpful um, because that's one of the things that the research suggested that students aren't told that they aren't told why this is important and and they aren't told either that there is a, pro a group process you know with the forming norming storming performing I mean once they hit those conflicts, they don't realize that's normal. And I think if we can help our students understand that it's okay, you know, you want, there's going to be conflict, but you need to communicate and figure out how to work that through and then providing those other resources that students can go to. And again, the instructor also saying, reminding students, this is normal. Here are some things you might want to try, but encouraging them to try to find ways to solve the conflict themselves. And then once it gets to a certain point that the instructor has outlined that they go, they, they get involved in, in mediating the problem. Um, the students, until they experience something more positive they will probably continue to feel somewhat negative about the about having to do group work but I think if there's the supports in place for your students which is what the research is suggesting that they may find group work less onerous and may actually find it that it's not as bad as it seems to be or has been for them in the past and I think you alluded to some of this um, about um, everyone's roles in the beginning, but how, how do you suggest grading group work, especially, you know, there's always those situations where one student doesn't do their, their part. Right. Um, again, peer assessment. There are some different, um, I've found some out there. I have, I think I have a couple I have to go dig for, um, but the peer, you, each individual assesses the individuals within their group. Um, and I think there has to be some, you have to take that in consideration as an instructor. If you're seeing that, you know, you have a group of four, but only three have really participated and done the work, well, then that fourth person shouldn't be getting the same credit. Again, I think that's one of the things that I know always frustrated me about group work was the fact that, I felt there was no consequences to the slacker in my group, so to speak. And I think students need to see that there are consequences to that and that it's not to say that the student assessment should be a huge, huge, huge component, but it does need to be taken into consideration when you're you're putting students in groups because they're the ones that are going to be able to tell you what's going on and yeah okay there's the there's the possibility that maybe two students don't get along so they they grade each other very low but you can also look at what the other students are saying about each individual and that can help temper that um, and it could be you have a really good performing group and they've all performing well so they're need 
there doesn't need to be any consequences to any individual in that group. So it, it, it's trying to find things in a way that can be fair to all, but I think peer assessment has to be part of that process so that students feel like, okay, I, I'm at least being heard. Yeah, so some of the conversation is, um, you know, um, Sherry says that when each student's responsible for particular parts, that she likes to grade each student on their individual contribution as well as grading the final project. So, um, you know, it's a piece of the rubric. It's not the entire thing. Right, exactly. Um, thing. And um, so another question is, should faculty grade each student individually and not as a group? Um, because one of the main complaints that Maureen has heard from students about group work is that everyone gets the same grade and they certainly didn't all contribute the same, right? Right, and that's where, that's where the peer assessment can be helpful. Um, and I understand that too, because I felt that way too as a as a former online student or a former student, that was always very, very frustrating. Um, but I th think that you have to look at it very holistically as much as you can. And there can be, you know, I think every, every instructor has to figure out how they want to grade it and how they want to present the rubric for grading. But I think there's an important component that it may be just part of it. And I think um, that was already alluded to is that there, is an individual grade, but there's also the group grade that does contribute to the overall grade of the project, perhaps. Maybe that's a way to do it. Um, there wasn't a lot in the research that I had found at this point that talked about how to grade or how you might do it. It was more of the how to, how to get it to work, how to get it to work possibly within your courses. So along those lines, another question, um, do you think it's necessary to declare a team lead or do you think it's okay to leave it to the students to step forward at different times during the project, noting, of course, that, that some won't do that. Maybe they're more the introverted or, you know, not willing to uh, be on the forefront. I think some of it depends on the project. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if a project allows itself to have those different individuals in charge at different time, I think that can work. Um, I really think that's really up to the to the instructor and and the project itself and the type of course it is. I think there's so many pieces, so it's I don't think there's a a hard and fast rule, so to speak, on how to do that. I think it's just um, I think every case every course has its pros and cons, and if you're going to do projects in there, you need to figure out how it works within your context. And, and how you think it will work best for your students. So these were just some ideas and suggestions, but I think what I took away from a lot of this was the fact of how to, of implementing project management principles can be really helpful in alleviating some of the problems in the group. This is definitely not the end all. Um, so the other question that I have, Teresa, is a um, just a clarification on one of the resources, mm -hmm. asking to repeat the info for the article about instructional design for online collaborative learning. Okay, where was that one? Is that? It's yeah. actually in it's in the um, the presentation itself. Okay, hang on, which I'm in the folder I didn't bring up, but it's one of the last. It is on the very last page of my presentation um, it's from Posey and Lyons and it's called the instructional design of online collaborative learning it's in the journal of um, education research um, so I'm, I'm guessing many of us can get our hands on it because a lot of our campuses have this the subscription to various databases so that was how I found it great thank you you're welcome I think I have fielded most of the questions. Uh, if anyone has something else, please feel free. Type in the chat. You can also unmute yourself if you'd like to talk. Absolutely. We don't mind hearing other voices besides our own. Oh, yes. But definitely um, some great conversation in the chat as well with suggestions for what people do and some other approaches they've seen. So that's, that's great sharing. I appreciate that. 
Oh, I think that's wonderful because, like I said, this is this was just what I found in the in some of the research. There is more research out there that I found after the fact that I will go back and I will edit this um, because I'll do a version of this at CIT um, because there seems to be a lot of interest in doing group work, but there the, there's the underlying value to our students that um, if we can help them find ways to do it in their classes and do it relatively well and learn some different skills, it can actually benefit them as they go out into the workforce. And I'm seeing some of this too with, um, I have children in, in middle and high school and so Maureen just asked a question that I, I see all the time um, because some some students are more comfortable um, in certain roles than others, right? So how do you deal with maybe that missed opportunity for some students to learn the different parts of the project when they're not responsible for every part? Should there be that, you know, one, sometime you're the manager, sometime you're this, sometime you're that, you know, and, and learning all the roles? I don't know. And, and it, I guess that really goes back to the course. Does it make sense to do that for the assignment? Um, you know, I'm thinking, off the top of my head, maybe for something that's, you know, um, I keep going back to the video because that's what I used to use it for with my students. I used to have them do certain things and um, I created a project, help them create project plans and help them um, implement their their short videos. Um, but yeah, it was some were more comfortable with others, but I would encourage my students to say, well, go work with that person and 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 see what's going on. So work together. Maybe, maybe it's not just one person doing it. Maybe it's two. Um, so that those that want to learn more and haven't had the opportunity, those opportunities are provided. So maybe those, those are some strategies that um, instructors can utilize to help students figure that out um, so that they can learn other skills. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I will have, um, if you don't mind going back to the other presentation, to the ending slides, that might just be easier than me taking over the controls for you. There you there go. You go. <laughs> Look how fast you are. <laughs> so, I found the right one. <laughs> that was quick. Well, Therese, I want to thank you for, um, for sharing with us today. We always appreciate your leadership and willingness to represent this open SUNY community. We recognize too that there, there may be others in our community who would like to share on a topic. So if you're interested, there is a link to submit a proposal. And today's session was recorded and again, will be made available um, at the same link right there where you registered. There's a bit.ly there. We'll be able to give you all the slides uh, as well as the recording and the uh, folder that Teresa shared with you. So you can also review past fellow chats that we've had. We have a website there where you can do that. And um, there are lots of topics that have been shared over the past, I think we're in our third season now of doing fellow chats. So that's exciting. All right, and one more slide just as a promotion. Let's see. There we go. Um, next month is Open Education Week, if you aren't familiar with that. But in partnership with Open or SUNY OER Services, Open SUNY Online Teaching is hosting lunchtime webinars around the topics of open educational resources and open pedagogy. So an announcement about those sessions will be coming out soon. So pay attention to email and to Twitter for that. And um, if you are interested, if you are not um, already an Open SUNY Fellow. If you're from an outside institution, we have a role for Friends of SUNY. You can take a look at that link there and join our community of practice so that you can share with us and we can share with you and you can stay informed of all of the things going on. So we look forward to seeing you at another virtual event soon and I appreciate you joining us. And I will post that link right for you in the chat, Judith. I am going to stop the recording first and then I'll take care of posting some, some links.